Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics in the shed, gearing up to take you out to chase a snapper. So we've got a sunrise session in the morning, bright and early. We're gonna sneak out there and try and catch the sunrise. We're gonna have about an hour of run out where we should get the bite and then the tide's gonna to turn to run in and we'll just see how we go. Estuary snapper is the target. So in the winter time, we often get larger snapper up in that sort of 50, 60, even 70 centimetre snapper come into the rivers and the estuary systems. And when we're fishing for those bigger snapper, we're often targeting the deepest structure that we can find in our systems that we fish. So it could be five, six, seven, eight, nine metres of water looking for structure and looking for bait to target those bigger fish. So the plastics I use are often a four inch centre jerk shad and a four inch streaks curly tails. And because we're fishing deeper, I'll fish them on a three eighth ounce or a half ounce 3.0 or 4.0 in a TT Lewis Headlocks HD. For the summer snapper that we're fishing for now, we often get a lot of smaller fish in the system. So those fish might be anywhere from sort of 20, 25 centimetres through to about maybe 50, 55 centimetres, but we're sort of around the mid 40s is a, is a nice snapper to catch in the summertime here. And what we're doing is we're fishing generally flats and drop offs. So in the winter time, really, really deep water, bigger fish. In the summertime, the fish often feed up onto the flats and they'll often hold on edges that are sort of two to four meters deep. So we're looking for weedy and rubbly edges in that two to four meters of water where the snapper might hold, and then they'll move up with the tide up onto the flats to feed. So in the summertime, because we're chasing smaller size fish, we'll generally fish smaller plastics. So a couple of go-tos that we fish are the two and a half inch Slim Swims from Z-Man, that 10 times tough elastic plastic and also the two and a half inch grubs as well. So that two and a half inch size plastic is excellent for those sort of just pan size snapper. And we fish them on a quarter 1.0 Demons. You can fish them on a quarter 1.0, uh, you can fish Headlocks HD, whatever you like, but I fish a light wire hook. I'm only fishing 10 pound braid, 10 pound leader, and that gives me good penetration if I, if I come across brim, flathead and other species as well. But yeah, good fun when you do get a pan size snapper on that light gear. The coolest thing about the session that we're doing tomorrow is I finally get to drive these things. So this is the new range of TT rods. So TT, as you know, TT lures, 20 plus years of uh, design and development of lures and, and products and that sort of thing. So combine that 20 years of design with a lifetime of fishing. And these are the rods that we've come up with. So beautiful for lure fishing. Those rods are awesome. And there's three in the series, the Copperhead, the Red Belly, and the Black Mumba. So I've, I'm gonna take one of each out with me. I've got a two to four kilo Copperhead, a two to four kilo Red Belly, and a three to six kilo Black Mumba. Just depends on the opportunities we get to fish in the morning, but pretty much first up, I'm gonna start with this guy. This is the Copperhead, the entry level rod in the range. So pretty much around that $100 mark, and you've got Fuji guides and 24 ton carbon blank. So really nice rod, medium action, so a little bit softer action than when you get into the higher end stuff. But yeah, we'll see how this guy goes on a snapper in the morning, give it a good run and, and hopefully put a bend in it. So buckle up, let's finish getting geared up and then we'll hit the water. Cheers. All right, we're out here on sunrise. So prime time of the day. Hopefully we can get a cheeky early snapper and then maybe just get onto the brim and flatties, maybe a trevally. See how we go. Just gonna work a draining edge, holding heaps of bait, hopefully. If we can find that bait on the edge, we might find the fish. So basically we're drifting down a channel between two banks. So we're gonna be just making, I can see the water changing over here, changing sort of from rough to smooth and that's a bank edge. So I'm basically just gonna drift down this bank edge, make a long cast into the edge. And then I'm just gonna hop the plastic back to me. So I'm just gonna let it hit the bottom. Watch the line go slack, hop the plastic and just pause and let it hit the bottom again. I'm gonna give it a little bit of time on the bottom early on here because I, well, I think we're a chance of a snapper early. So give it a little bit more time sitting on the bottom. Once, once we get 
sun up a bit more i'll probably fish a bit faster and chase some big brim in this water but for now we want to be on the bottom and hopefully pick up a snapper off this edge I'm fishing a two to four kilo tt rods copperhead beautiful rod affordable rod you know if you're just getting into your plastics and you want a rod that's under 100 bucks check them out bargain drifting a little bit quicker than i'd like with this northwester pushing us along but we'll just cast ahead of the drift a little bit more Yep, there we go, there we go. That's what we're looking for. That's pretty solid up on that edge. That picked up the little slim slims. Oh, feels all right. Not a monster, but a good start to the session. Got that two to four kilo copperhead buckled over nicely. Buddy, yeah. felt a bit Trev like doing your little round and round and round. Beautiful little Trev to kick off. Awesome fun on light gear. Little two to four kilo copperhead, 10 pound braid, 10 pound leader, good just general estuary stuff. If we get a flatty, less chance of him biting us off. Look at the color of that thing in the morning. Absolute beautiful little Trev fish on that didn't take long a couple of casts so again punching up on that edge so long cast up onto that bit of a smooth water line we can see which is the edge of the bank let it get down to the bottom just hopping it back so I'm watching the line and the line will either depending on you know your conditions if it's a really glassy day you can see the line cutting a V as it as it sinks it makes it really easy to see when that V stops cutting and it just goes slack you're on the bottom if it's a bit breezier and ripply just watch your line and you'll see your line will be pulling down pulling down and then it'll just go Doom, and, and just go slack and you know you're on the bottom that's where we want to be in this situation you don't always want to be fishing the bottom depending on target species but for general estuary stuff we want to be down around the weed and rubble and that bottom structure a lot of fish feeding in the bottom feeding on crabs and yabbies and prawns and that sort of thing but also that that slow rolling can be effective especially in shallow water where you you're slow winding that lure just above the bottom fairly fast drift with that dropping tide so i'm just casting ahead of the drift which then allows me to work the plastic sort of back back towards me without just dragging it along behind me Keep it a bit more natural. When you're out on the water, keep an eye out for changes in the, the actual water surface, and that can give away a lot of things. Like here, I've got sort of a, I've got two smooth lines. This first smooth line here is the deeper section of the channel. It's basically just the channel running through. The other smooth line on the other side is the edge of the bank where the bank goes up so I can use those basically to guide where I'm fishing and set up my drift so that I'm drifting down along that smooth line and I'm fishing in along there so you know the fish could be anywhere here but I'm just focusing on that available structure in that area there also you might see upwellings where the water's being pushed up by structure on the bottom rocks or something like that eddies which is caused by structure as well so Keep an eye out on the surface of the water for just for water movement that's created by structure or for these wind lanes and channel lines and, and that sort of thing that can help you find structure where it just looks like a big flat surface. What you can also do using those lines on the water as a bit of a guide is you can actually cover more area. So the first drift I did was out quite wide, then I might move in closer to that line and drift then I might basically sit on that line and drift. Then I might do a drift inside the line. 
So I'm drifting back on the same angle with the wind and the tide, but it's allowing me to cover a much bigger area and hopefully find where the fish are holding or find the bait that's holding and then hopefully that attracts some fish. Oh, there's a tap. Yep, there's a fish. Yep, there's a fish. Oh, that was a bit more subtle tap, that one. Oh, loving it. That's that platypus on this reel. Throws a really, really long cast. Beautiful eight carrier braid. And it is a snap. That's what we were looking for. But he's going to be too small, that bloke. But awesome fun. That was just that beautiful, subtle tap on the bottom. As soon as you hit them, they just go for a screaming around that snapper. So, how's the colours of that thing in the morning? Absolute magic. Won't muck around. We'll get him off quick because he's probably got a mate down there. Hopefully, his mate's a bit bigger. That's what we're looking for. Get that cast out there. They're up feeding on that weed edge early morning. So, I'm sitting in maybe three meters of water casting up into about a meter of water up on that weed edge so those snapper they've got access to deeper water but they can go and feed up on that weedy edge eat all the prawns and crabs and everything else that's hanging out up on that edge oh missed that one i just actually started to pick up to wind in again <laughs> They say you've got to back your tree right to the boat or right to the yak, and in that case, I pulled it away from the fish. Get too excited after catching the snapper. I want to catch a big snapper. <laughs> All right. So we've made our cast into the edge. Let it hit the bottom. We're just going to give it a couple of little hops. Pause it. Get on the bottom again, a couple little hops and mine the slack up. Let it hit the bottom. We're just working that edge there. Yep, oh, come on, that feels more like a brimbo. We'll just roll it. If it's a brimbo, we might just grab it. No, stop. Come on, brimbo. Might be a bit of smaller stuff in amongst it. Another cool thing I noted then, where I caught that snapper was actually right near, there was a crab pot there. So that is my mark to come back to in the yak. So, yep, got a, got a snapper near that crab pot. I'll come back to that crab pot and I'll drift, it, drift near there again because they could be up feeding. There might be a good little rubble patch there, or a bit of, bit of weed or something holding them there. So worth making note of where you catch them. Come back and hit that spot again. And I'm fishing one of my go-to patterns. If anyone's watched any of the vids, this is a, a quarter ounce one -oh, TT Lewis Demon's Jig Head. And on there, I've got a two and a half inch Slim Swims. And color wise, because the water, we've had a bit of rain and stuff, so the water's a little bit cloudy and sedimenty. So I'm making the most of that UV reactive quality of the Midnight Oil color and also that bit of glitter that's in there. We've got early morning, so we've got low sun. So low sun and murky water. So I'm using a, a midnight oil for the UV pop and also for that bit of flash from the, the fleck that's in that plastic. And so far a Trevally's eaten it and a Snapper's eaten it. So, and had a few other bites. So the fish don't mind that color, that's for sure. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, there we go. That picked that up right near the bottom. Ah, oh, I dropped him. Didn't feel like a monster. That's all right, we'll get out there. Oh, there's a scale on the hook. There we go. That's why it didn't hook up. I ended up with a scale on the hook there. While we're in here, we'll take the opportunity, put a little bit of scent on there as well. A bit of mullet today we're using. Doesn't really matter what flavor, as long as you scent it up there with that. Procure, I reckon that's mullet's favorite of mine. A sardine pilchard, another favourite. Bloody tuna, inch or salt water, salt water yabby nipper. There's too many cool flavours now. 
but just any one of those will, is good in the salt water. So again, we're down into around sort of two to three, so we want to watch that line. The wind's blowing the line a little, but I can still see when it goes slack. So just stay in touch with the with the lure a little. Just working that hopping retrieve back. Oh yep, there we go. There we go. This is where we got our snapper before. I can see that crab pot just there, so this is where we got our snapper, so hopefully it's another one. Oh, he's heading for the crab pot. Come on, buddy. Get some line back on him. He's not happy. So there you go, that's what we did. We used that crab pot as a mark of where we got our snapper before, so we came back up, drift that sort of area again. This one feels a little bit better if it is a snapper. And it is. What a beautiful fish. Oh, come on, buddy. What an awesome fish. There we go. That's the target. Oh, oh, come on, mate. Don't want to lose him. Come on, mate, we need to get a photo with you, don't we? So there we go. How good is that? Get some light on him. Look at that fish. That is absolutely beautiful. That little TT rods, two to four kilo. Copperhead, doing the job. Stoked. That was an awesome fun. Right, that guy's about 42, 42 centimetres or so. So we, we're going to take him for a feed, I reckon. That's awesome. 